In this video, we're going to take a look at the AWS SDK API for S3. Actually, we're going to uh, write a short script that uploads a file to our S3 bucket and see how it works. So let's get started by first creating the bucket. We'll choose uh, some random bucket name. These bucket names have to be unique, so I just chose something long that uh, hopefully doesn't exist yet. And then here we want to ask S3 to have a public access to the files that we upload. In the actual uh, production app, you definitely want to consider the permissions that you give to the files that you upload. But for the sake of the example, we'll just uh, give it a public permission so we'll be able to access these files uh, from the URL. So let's create the bucket. Okay, it should be ready now, and uh, let's save the name of the bucket to our uh, code file. So this index.ts file is going to contain the script that we're going to write, which will uh, load an image from the root folder, and then upload this image to S3, and then get back the URL to access this, uh, this image, since we can access it uh, publicly, and just print it back to the console so we can try it out and see that it works. So first I wanna show you that I have this image.jpg file in the root folder uh, and I'm going to use this file to upload it to S3 and to our bucket. So let's see how it works. So first I created this main function and I'm just going to use this function to contain all the code for a script and immediately execute it. And I'm also going to add a try catch statement. So let's see how our function is going to look like. First we need to load the content of the image to a variable. Once we load the uh, image, we want to uh, just send it to S3. So this data variable is going to contain a buffer, which have the contents of the file that we loaded. And then we'll just pass this buffer to the upload to S3 function. And we want this function to return a URL that will just have the public uh, URL for the file that we uploaded. So let's see where we get this read file function from and how we implement the upload to S3 function. So for the read file function, we need to import two libraries. So what we did here is we called promisify to make our read file function to return a promise. This way we can run it like this and expect to get a promise back, which resolves to the buffer that contains the contents of the file. So now let's implement our upload to S3 function. So this is how our upload to S3 function is going to look like. It's going to get uh, a single parameter, a data that will contain the contents of the file that we loaded. And then it will return a promise that will result to a string. And the string will be uh, the URL of the file we just uploaded. For now, we just generate a name that contains a random UUID uh, using a library, another library that I loaded. And uh, <clears throat> we'll append to this, to this uh, random name the extension of the file that we loaded. So we'll just hard code JPEG in here because uh, we'll always upload the JPEG file for this example. But uh, if you actually run it in production, you will obviously need to find a way to figure out the extension of the file that you upload and uh, use it here instead. So now let's see how we can call the S3 API from the AWS SDK.
So what I did here is simply initiated the S3 object that we're going to use to upload our file. The function is going to use uh, is a put object. Now we also want to tell the AWS SDK to return a promise. So instead of using callbacks, we'll just ask to get a promise back. And this way we can just wait for it to finish. So now let's see which uh, parameters this put object function expects to get. So first of all, it expects to get a bucket, which is the bucket name that we're going to upload the file to. It also expects to get a key, which is the name of the file that uh, we want to have for the file that uh, we uploaded. We'll set a content type. And again, we'll just hard code image JPEG in here. And the body is going to be the buffer that uh, contains the contents of the file that we are uploading. And last, we're going to give it uh, permission and set it to public read. Because in this example, we want all of the files that we upload to be completely public so we can access them from a URL. Now in here, we'll uh, need to return the URL, but let's run this function first and see if we have so far works. And we'll also see how the URL looks like after we upload one file as an example. So this is the random name that we generated for the file that we uploaded. Let's see that it actually appears here. Yep, this is our file. Let's try to open it. This is the URL that uh, was generated for us. Now actually let's uh, replace the name that we return with the actual URL that we have. So this is how this URL is structured. First, we have the bucket name. Then this part is the region that we pass to the constructor of our S3 object. And the last part is simply the name that we generated for the file that we uploaded. Okay, now let's try it again. And now we expect to get the entire URL back. So this is the URL that we got back. Let's try to put it in the browser and see if we can actually access the file that we uploaded to S3. Yep, and it seems to be working. This is the file that uh, we sent to S3. And it was uh, pretty simple. We just uh, defined the S3 object that we're going that we use to upload the file. We wrote a pretty straightforward upload to S3 function. It accepts uh, data, the buffer that contains the contents of the file, generates a random name, calls the S3 API with the contents of the file, and tells it which bucket to save to, how to call the image. It's basically pretty similar to just writing a file to the file system. And then it uh, generates the URL that points to the file that we uploaded. 